welcome. Let's give everybody a couple seconds to join here and then we'll get started. All right, welcome to Diversifying, Expanding and Reviving. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I want to start off by saying thank you to Sylvia and the Magazine Association of BC for asking me to be a part of this professional development session. My name is Michelle Allison and I'm a group publisher with Annex Business Media. Annex owns 60 plus media brands that facilitate conversation, connection, education and experiences in many B2B industries such as manufacturing, construction, professional services, retail services and my personal favorite, agriculture. Annex has offices and a print plant in Ontario, but I work remotely from my home office here in Brandon, Manitoba. I joined Annex as an account manager on a couple of their agricultural brands. And throughout the years, my role has evolved to associate publisher, to publisher, and earlier this year, I joined the executive leadership team as group publisher. My team and I sell print magazines, high impact print tactics, digital display, email marketing, video display, programmatic, sponsored content, podcasts, video interviews, social media, live events, virtual events, surveys, webinars, and likely even more tactics that I'm missing. Our customer base has included all, si all sizes of agribusinesses and we work with a good number of agencies as well. So let's get rolling. Today I'm going to dive into the importance of diversifying your account and your prospect list and some strategies or tactics that force you to think outside the box. I may not give you something that will work perfectly in your brand, but take the idea and adapt it to your brand or your customer base and think about how you could make something like the idea work with your existing product portfolio. We're also going to cover some ground on recouping lost advertisers. All right, so do we have too many eggs in one basket? We often see success by building those long standing loyal customer relationships. However, the risk is high when we are very reliant on those long standing accounts. We may feel comfortable with that relationship or the buyer, um, and we're comfortable with the relationship between that, our brand and their company brand, right? It makes sense to do business together. But the possibility always exists that their business model could change, their needs change, uh, they have turnover in their marketing department, um, budget cuts, we've all seen those, um, agency changes, or uh, we find ourselves in a global pandemic um, that sometimes turns off the, the, the marketing tab, right? Customer concentration is a measure of how total revenue is distributed among your customer base. So it's different for every industry um, and niche within a given industry. But for example, retail sales at Dollarama would have a low concentration, while say a large engineering firm may have a fewer number of clients that each account for a significant share of revenue. So that could be a high concentration. A rule of thumb is that if a single customer generates 10% or more of your revenue, or if your top five accounts account for 25% or more of your revenue, you have high customer concentration. However, uh, this rule of thumb should be applied with care. Um, in, in other markets, it may appear risky if you rely on customers from only a certain industry or sector of an industry which could also be seen as client dependence uh, without running numbers as precisely as determining what one client represents as a percentage of revenue. The risks of high concentration include potentially a devastating effect on revenue, profit and cash flow if you were to lose a major customer. It might only be one client, but if they're five to 10% of your business, we all know how hard it is to find another client to replace that type of revenue in its entirety. Larger customers know their importance to your business. They can exert pricing pressure and use their spend as leverage where smaller customers might not do this or they just don't have the, the spend capacity to really negotiate uh, that type of discussion. Um, these types of pricing models can result in, in decreased profit if not um, 
examined carefully. Major customers generally require more attention. The large customers take a larger share of resources and time spent on them in comparison to smaller customers. On a one-to-one -one comparison, I know that sometimes smaller customers take more time to get um, orders in or get the creative and you're following up with more reports. But um, generally, we spend more time with our major accounts um, to make sure they're happy, to make sure they have everything they need. They have larger proposals generally. Um, everything, they just get a lot more of our time. Um, and a lot of time these, these major customers are catered to and this diversion of time and resources makes it challenging to diversify and change your level of concentration over a period of time. Over dependence on a few customers can actually lower the value of your brand to external parties. And so prospective buyers, lenders, investors, and even external advertisers in our industry can generally see uh, the customer concentration fairly easily. Um, you can look and see who's advertising in our magazines or on our website or uh, who's sponsoring our webinars. It's very easy. It's out there, easy to find, right? Um, sometimes it can be viewed negatively, lowering the value of your company. All right, so the first tactic we're going to talk about is seeking referrals and testimonials. And so there's a few ways to do this. Tactics you're already aware of, likely, but you need to use them strategically um, and in direct correlation to adding to your customer base. Um, you need to seek out these referrals and testimonials um, with an end goal of using them to find new business or find different um, business within a, a certain um, vertical or a certain sector. So referrals can be done by asking clients if they would refer you to um, you and your brand uh, to anyone in their network. Testimonials can be done via customer surveys um, or by direct asks. Depending on the relationship, the customer may be comfortable submitting that testimonial directly to you, um, or you can, set, you can set up a Google form very easily and let them submit on their own, anonymous, anonymously or not. It should always come with a sincere thank you and appreciation of their business. Let them know exactly what you plan to do with that testimonial, whether it's shared on the website, um, use a quote in a media kit or on a special rate sheet. Um, just let them know so that if they happen to see their quote, they're not surprised by it. If you ever receive a compliment via email or in a meeting or on a call, ask your client if you could use their quote in future marketing efforts and just let them know that you really, really appreciate this nice comment or compliment um, and ask if they'd be comfortable allowing you to use that to share. Share recommendations on LinkedIn on your client's profiles and share how great it is to work with them and that their knowledge and attention to detail is incredible. Um, they might just return with an exchange of equally nice words on your profile. And we know how important social selling is these days. So this speaks numbers. And referrals, of course, um, help build business by itself. Uh, but testimonials can be used in so many different methods. Polish your online presence. So increasing your presence online in several aspects will help bring in new or advertisers organically. And now this is not an overnight tactic, okay? This is something you need to commit to doing consistently long-term. Um, so as of right now, they're not going to see you at the trade shows, the events, or any of the places that people generally go to make connections in any given business industry. Um, we're just, we're not there. So we need to get online and, and build up our, our personal brand, build up our name and uh, share the, the brand that we're selling anywhere and everywhere so that more people are um, familiar with it. The first place is your corporate website. So this should be a reflection of your values, vision, and a 
a simple and a digestible area that shows your customers exactly what you offer without muddying it up too much with too much copy um, or too much wording or text. Um, tell them why you offer it. Um, again, this is why they should advertise with you, why they should do business with you and what they're going to get out of doing business with you. Again, this is just benefits over features. Your website should be about you but more catered to your customers. Make frequent noticeable updates, whether it's an update to copy or a new gated download, um, a new link, new blog, um, company milestones, employee awards, corporate announcements, um, portfolio additions, um, anything that'll engage and nurture new and returning visitors. So they want to revisit your website and see what you're up to as a corporate brand. Brand websites or specific magazine websites are, of course, where you're going to want to win your clients over with your content. And you want to make sure that it's relevant, digestible, credible content that the, the, the end user audience is looking for. And an advertiser should be exactly where that target audience is looking, right? So as long as you um, can keep your brand website clean, up to date and, and relevant, um, just by them visiting your website, they'll know what you're about, what kind of content you put forward, and that they should be aligned with your content because it's trusted and, and timely. Um, so for, for sales reps, this is just a gentle reminder. Make sure you're spending time on, on your brand websites. Read the articles, the stories, the press releases. Look for any company mentions, trends, ideas, um, startups, um, whatever your brand. Just make sure you're spending time on the website. And this seems so simple. Um, yet a lot of reps, we get so busy in the day-to-day -day stuff that sometimes we forget to literally schedule time to dive into our industry and, and just take a moment to read the content that our team is putting out there, or we might have missed, um, you know, an industry announcement. So check for press releases, connect with your editors, make sure that you, the, the line of communication is wide open so that you don't miss any potential ideas or companies that, that could could be a great fit to do business with. Social media presence. Um, so this is about growing your social media presence in a professional form. And this is generally done on LinkedIn, um, but in some markets, Twitter is highly fruitful as well. Using social media, is it's more for education and connection than it is for actual sales. Use LinkedIn to connect with prospects, um, your your regular customers, of course, as well, and find people in your target audience that you'd be interested in connecting with. Start engaging and posting on social media. And some things that you can share are marketing focused articles, lead generation articles, if lead generation is something you're able to provide, um, content marketing insights, um, what's happening in your brand, are you hosting a virtual event? Um, do you have an awards program? Uh, share industry focused articles that you think would be um, interesting or important to your advertiser base or the advertiser base that you'd like to tap into. Uh, you can share if you're looking forward to attending an event that you're either hosting or, or just attending uh, as a conference. If your business is celebrating a milestone, don't be afraid to share that. Um, or if your team, you know, if you hire a new team member, make sure that that's um, highly visible to, to outside stakeholders. The other examples could be something that you've read or watched. Um, for example, a TED Talk, something that's inspired you, a, a podcast that you're really interested in that, you know, maybe is sharing great insights on advertising or marketing. Share it and see if you can get some comments or maybe somebody else in your um, and your connection list also listens to that podcast and they comment on it. And that just, that expands your reach. And so just as we always encourage our advertisers to stay top of mind, um, we as sales reps need to make an effort to keep our brand and our personal brand top of our advertisers mind as well. And social selling is just one tool in the toolbox to do that. Expand your offerings. So um, depending on your resources, um, you can look at different ways to expand the tactics uh, within your portfolio.
advertisers like to hear that um, you're trying something new and a lot want to be doing those things. And even and if they can't commit, say it's a higher budget item, it still gives you an opportunity to connect with new advertisers. And so let's dive into a few examples of different tactics available. Focused e-newsletters. So when it comes to anything focused or themed, you can do this in two ways. Uh, interesting topics that you know will sell or two, when you really want to uh, diversify your advertising base, you can find topics that you know would be of value to the advertisers you are not currently doing business with you and figure out a way that you can still make the content high value to your audience. Um, but it also it gives you a valuable item with limited inventory potentially uh, to build a package to share with new advertisers and get them interested in doing business with you. Email marketing is uh, pretty self-explanatory for the most part, but how I suggest using this tactic to bring in new advertisers is by analyzing your email marketing reports and metrics every single month. Let's say, for example, um, TD Canada Trust ran an email campaign with you focused on, on personal investing, and it performed great, but they're really the only bank doing business with you. So build a list of competitive advertisers and start using those metrics to your benefit. Share um, a rough idea of those average, you know, open rates, clicks, and, and start using those metrics to, to competitively sell. Um, if it, you know, if TD's eblast, you know, performs strongly, then that indicates your audience is interested in hearing more about this topic from service providers uh, such as the new new client that you're trying to land. Contests and awards. These could be photo contests, video contests, you know, top five over 50, um, innovation awards, yard landscaping contests. Uh, literally any brand can find some sort of a, a contest or award that can help bring in different advertisers or expand the spend from other advertisers. Print tactics, um, pretty self-explanatory, but if you're looking for something a little bit different here, just ensure you're looking at any um, potentially wasted space or unique space that you aren't currently selling in your magazine. Um, so this could include space on your cover, uh, your table of contents page, um, you know, a certain, small little banner uh, near the on the near the masthead or on the, the masthead page um, and, and just keep an eye on on any high impact tactics you know post-it notes or cat dog type cover tactics skate folds um, keep those things in your back pocket in case anybody wants to talk about something really high impact Content marketing, um, again, this could be print and digital or digital only. Um, and this can also be advertorial style where it's basically, you know, pay to play or um, what I like to call true sponsored content. And, and they pay you as the brand. Um, likely you would hire this out to a freelancer, um, but you write a, a really good article and then you promote it for them. Content marketing allows you to pitch something far more unique and targeted to the advertisers who want editorial space in your magazine or on your website. So when I'm looking for um, the prospects to share the idea of content marketing with, I watch for companies using advertorials and print ads um, and any prospect that has white papers or blogs on their website um, and any companies coming out with new technology research or a new product that would really benefit from a long copy explanation. Social media marketing can, uh, can be added to your portfolio either programmatically, if you sell programmatic advertising, um, or you could, if you have a great following, uh, you can offer um, simple paid sponsored posts. You can also dive into podcasts, webinars, um, video marketing, new display inventory um, events, either live or virtual. And, and these all offer different um, price points, experiences, uh, value, and, and they help accommodate preferences from different um, 
companies that you could potentially be doing business with. Uh, the next option here is to identify more high value clients. So when you realize that your customer concentration is high, but you know, there's still big fish in the pond, uh, sit down, get organized and start seeking out those high value clients that are similar in nature to your top, say five to 20 clients. Make a list of your top 10 clients and then look for more clients like them or prospect their competitors. This should give you a small list of your large targets to add to your prospecting pipeline. And once you identify your high value clients, don't stop there. Make another range of clients and replicate the practice. Say, um, if you've already started looking for clients similar to your top 10, take your top 10 to 25 and do it again. You can also do this by client category or sector. So real estate, banking, um, home decor, any, any, um, any type of you know sector that you have uh, several potential sponsors in, you can do the exact same thing. And you're just looking for similar, similar businesses that you're not doing business with. Again, the magic happens here when you sit down, get organized and plan out who you want to do business with and, and how you're going to execute on every touch point until you know how to serve them uh, with the value they are willing to pay you for. So you need to use your CRM and um, potentially a real-time spreadsheet to, to manage these top 25, top 30 uh, high value prospects that you want to, to open the door with. Point five is determine existing content niches with some uh, revenue support, but leave room for more category players. I've always loved the term niche your niche, but as you do that, you can also incorporate tactics for niches that are already working. And I'll give you an example. So um, say, for example, something as simple as finances or investing. So say I had an example or, or so, sorry, say I had a goal of selling three webinars in Q4, um, and I was also still looking to reach my goal of new advertisers for the year. So perhaps um, the, the idea here isn't to start mass pitching webinars to my entire account or prospect list because I know I need to sell three webinars, um, yet look at you know things that you know about your industry and the time of year that makes sense. So I know that people and businesses make purchases close to year end for tax purposes among our audience. And finances are a niche within my brand that there's generally support for, but there's definitely uh, businesses that I would like to do um, business with. After building the list of prospects, which are potentially similar to big players in this client category, but not actively doing business with me, I'm going to try and sell this webinar series to them. So I'm going to lay out some rough content ideas for them and pitch it so they it's easy for them they they can see what the ideas are they can see what the webinar topics are going to be and if they want to you know tweak those after they confirm the, the buy then we could do that but this at least gets them thinking about what the possibilities are so put together your sell sheet or an email or a sales video and 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 sell a webinar series um you know now i'm selling one focused on say year-end purchasing decisions for young business members. And the topics of suggestion for the webinar series are say key factors in year-end purchases for entrepreneurs. Investing 101 and RSP considerations for young adults. Um, and then with that, you can also add on some additional options for consideration to build up other tactical revenue. So you could offer the opportunity to turn those webinars into podcasts or have articles written about each webinar by a freelancer and, and then promote those articles, uh, just like sponsor content through the website, social media, and through email marketing. So we put that into a nice proposal, an outline, um, an idea for consideration, and we get to work and get it sold. Point six is talking about determining the niches or client categories that are not generating revenue, but it still makes sense for those niches or, or client categories to do business with you and the audience that you serve um, would 
value hearing from these uh, categories. So every once in a while, do a deep dive into which clients and which client categories you aren't getting a lot of business from and sort out why that is. Is it a lack of recent touch points? Um, is it audience? Is it demographics, content, um, price? Maybe their preferred media is something it's, you're not offering or mismanagement of the accounts. Um, from here, you can either develop a content strategy that would bring in business from this category or per, put a certain number of these clients on your list and focus your efforts on them um, very exclusively until you've closed a certain percentage of them. Say you prospect 10 new wealth management firms and you set a goal to close four by December 31st, right? So set those goals and, and work towards that. And then as you get more comfortable with doing business with these client categories, um, you'll start to understand the, their sector needs and what they're looking for. And this will help you bring in more clients uh, within that sector. Network. So I, I know this seems self-explanatory for sales reps and we all want to do it and we're missing it and we know the importance of it. But in these times, um, we can't, again, we can't get to the, the big trade shows or the big conferences. Um, so I suggest attending virtual events whenever, wherever you can that uh, will, will put you in front of uh, potential advertisers. Um, Virtual events um, can help you find lots of leads and connect you with them on that event platform. And then, you know, you can connect with them on LinkedIn after you've made a business connection. Um, some of them are happy to chat with you right then and there. Some of them are, um, you know, excited to see your name or they, you know, will chat with you because they recognize that you're from a, you know, a local brand that they know or a, a magazine that they've maybe even done business with in the past. Um, so I've, I've joined quite a few virtual events over the past uh, year. And again, we found lots of leads. Uh, there's lots of potential and, and people are more and more willing to connect on virtual events uh, now more than, you know, definitely more than a year ago. So um, um, take advantage of that wherever you can. Idea number eight here is to look for synergies. So if you work within a, a publishing company that has other brands, um, just try and look for any other synergies that you could expand on uh, by partnering with the, these brands. So it'll force you to look outside the box in terms of both content um, and advertisers or sponsors for whatever you choose to, 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 to build with another brand. Uh, this can also work, of course, if you have an industry with, you know, many associations, uh, whether they're regionally, nationally, or, or global type associations. Um, a lot of times they're looking for different uh, partners or partnerships, um, events to, to work together on, um, and these type of things can, can really help expand your reach. All right, point number nine is get real in your outreach. So in the, if the past year hasn't forced you to uh, analyze your outreach communication, uh, now is the time. Email inboxes are overflowing. Uh, company phones are on call forwarding. Voicemails are full. Virtual fatigue is real. And our days are more jam-packed than ever before. Um, if you're using... Yeah, email or voicemail, you need to be short and to the point. Ask for meetings to eliminate any miscommunication between email and, and you can, you know, now you can share your screen, you can show them exactly what a certain um, advertising tactic would look like. And um, again, just don't forget about how important it is to really ask for that sale, especially virtually and right now because it's because People are busy, things fall off people's radar, you know, balls get dropped. And, and so just try and ask for that confirmation, you know, as soon as, you know, you're in that right step of the sales process um, to get that confirmation as soon as you can. You don't have to be um, implicitly selling. Let your new prospects know that you have a get demographic they should be in front of. Let them know you want to present them with ideas for consideration or tactics, integrated campaigns worth considering. If you're working on expanding a client category, let your new prospects know that you have clients in similar sectors that are seeing solid results with you already. 
And, um, you know, don't be afraid to revamp and, and review your email and voicemail templates or scripts um, and, and add a little bit more personal touch to them um, while still keeping it short and sweet. All right, a tactic here uh, to help diversify your, your, your client base and, and expand your reach um, is definitely using video in the sales process. So blending your sales process to include the phone, email, social selling, virtual meetings, and now recorded videos, uh, as well as audio blurbs, um, it, it's key. It's, uh, it's really important to use um, multiple communication channels as it allow you to reach contacts in the outlet that they're comfortable with. Uh, bringing video calls into the sales and account management process can help uh, accelerate initial discovery meetings to create a strong first impression, uh, create a plan for a second meeting and, and ask for that second meeting to share a presentation and or proposal. And when aiming to create highly effective video sales calls, create the experience that makes you stand out and go the extra mile. It allows the brand new clients that you're trying to bring in to, to build your customer base. It allows them to get to know you must much faster than perhaps a string of emails, right? Or voicemails. Um, so don't be afraid to record a short, short video and let them see who you are. Or put a face to a name. HubSpot actually saw a 400% increase in email prospecting conversion when those emails included a personalized video. And hippovideo.io noted that a video can reduce the sales cycle by up to 40%. So again, if you're looking to expand reach, really consider using video in that sales process. Personal video messages uh, in an email can also improve open rates and CTAs. They help you stand out um, and build trust. It's really a non-intrusive way to share your message to stakeholders and videos are also easy for them to share with their team without the message being misconstrued or any details missed. And you can use a software like Vidyard, um, which will help you analyze, store, share, personalize your videos. But you can also do it um, without software, you know, just by recording a simple video on your computer through Zoom, through Quick Play, and then, you know, uploading it as a private video on YouTube. Uh, next tactic here is to use both push and pull sales strategies. Um, so anybody who uh, loves to weight train or work out, uh, you'll recognize these terms because we use them to identify different days in our workout schedule as the efforts train different muscles. And both days are incredibly important to building your best physique, right? And so in sales, we've used inbound and outbound as the, the terms for years. And that's what's very well known. And the same analogy works here. Push efforts are more of the direct outbound efforts, cold calls, cold emails, direct meeting requests, um, whereas the, the pull sales efforts are long-term, softer efforts that you do to encourage your target advertiser to reach out or generate awareness of your brand. These would be things like uh, gated media kit downloads, um, podcasts about B2B advertising, sharing content with advertisers. Um, writing blogs or articles on your LinkedIn uh, profile, um, different sponsorships or partnerships, um, perhaps a frequently asked questions section on your website specifically related to advertising and marketing or doing business with you. And as inbound or, or pull sales strategies become more popular, be consistent about nurturing the top of the funnel leads and not in a way where you're continually just checking in. If leads have become unresponsive to your calls, emails, voicemails, change your approach. Stop selling, start educating, and use different tactics or start sharing different content um, to keep you, again, top of mind and give, give your advertisers or, or that new client base something to think about. Point 12, uh, your CRM software is meant to help you, not burden you. Um, I know sometimes it takes, you know, a lot of work to make sure everything's in your CRM and to check it and, and make sure you're, you're ticking all the boxes. But um, if you're serious about increasing your customer base to bring in more revenue, you need to devote time to planning, prospecting and patterns. Take those three P's, connect them to your CRM and your CRM data and um, 
and, and that'll really help you on a few steps that I'm going to lay out in the next slide here. We need to plan our day. Um, again, our days can get away from us so fast. We know that, you know, our email, our inboxes are, are moving at like light speed. It feels like some days, but um, try and get ahead, plan your day. Sometimes that's, you know, at, at five o'clock the day before plan for tomorrow, you know, on Friday plan for your next week, but make sure you're, you're actually devoting some time to, to what you need to do um, short-term, long-term goals and how you're going to get there. Time block for prospecting daily. Um, businesses who are, or brands who are doing um, progressively, you know, maintaining their, their revenue or growing, uh, it's because they're focusing in on those prospects and ways to build their business um, above and beyond what their, their account list is right now. So make sure you're, you're time blocking and scheduling time to prospect um, and and find new prospects uh, to, to build up that list and that pipeline. Make sure you're actually prospecting, do your research and do the work and get onto different websites, um, blogs, search terms to see who's using Google AdWords. Um, yeah, I just, I can't emphasize enough this enough, do your research and, and really, Spend some time um, on the social media platforms, of course, in your competitor, competitors' websites and magazines, and, and make sure that you're, you're truly committing time to prospecting uninterrupted. When I talk about patterns, I mean you need to determine which templates, proposals, voicemail scripts, uh, video scripts, which ones worked. Which ones help you move through the sales funnel? Um, even if perhaps that sale didn't close, how many of them got you to a meeting? How many of them got you to a proposal? So keep track of what templates and scripts you're using and if they're working um, and document that and then you know, revamp them or keep implementing them um, to get more closed deals. Uh, Okay, assign yourself uh, tasks, reminders, the to-dos, um, lists of prospects for each day of the week. Um, you can use your CRM uh, to do this, or you can do it you know, in a spreadsheet if your CRM is not advanced enough to do that. Um, but use your CRM data and your CRM to organize your day so that you can you know, make more money. Um, and, and a lot of times, our days are just so jam packed with just the date, the, the tasks that keep us going um, that we're not planning enough to get more prospecting done. So use, use your CRM to assign tasks, follow-ups, um, create the lists. If you have a calendar in your CRM, use that um, and, and get organized and, and keep, keep prospecting and make sure that's a priority uh, most days of the week if you can. And uh, last point here is don't forget to look at the older, potentially dead leads that are in your CRM. So folks that you haven't touched base with in, in six plus months, um, can you breathe some life into them? When might they be ready to have those discussions again? You know, what's your plan of attack to um, get back in, in touch with them? So that leads us to our next discussion, which is reviving a lost soul. So I'm just going to quickly touch on, you know, how to bring back a, uh, potentially lost advertiser. And so again, getting ahead and implementing key sales processes, KPIs and schedules are key to retaining customers. And these are so crucial to get ahead of because bringing back a lost customer or landing a new one is generally actually more expensive than maintaining an existing account. So we need to start um, tracking and, and analyzing the churn. So is it is it a sales rep concern? Is it a company-wide issue? Um, why have these folks um, stopped doing business with us? Um, have they gone out of business? Is it a, is it a sector thing? Um, so really start analyzing what, you know, who we lost and why did we lose them? Uh, implement ways to receive customer feedback. 
Um, so again, this could be just regular annual customer service type um, surveys. This could be some sort of a company corporate wide process where after you, you know, sign a contract with a new advertiser, uh, you know, a survey goes out and you ask them for feedback about the, the buying process and doing business with you. Um, so again, there's different ways to do this. Um, uh, but I would definitely encourage that. Um, be proactive and incorporate uh, customer communication plans for all accounts. Um, so again, this is type of, you know, planning for success um, and just making sure that you're scheduling and setting tasks and reminders to make sure that you're communicating with all of those regular accounts um, and the ones that are kind of at the top of the funnel, you know, even if they're quite, they're not quite ready for a meeting or a proposal, you, you start scheduling, you know, okay, no problem. I'm going to touch base with you in four weeks. Set that in your CRM so you you don't miss that in in a month. Um, work on you know this is again part of your 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 customer retention strategies. But you know I always say stop stop waiting till Christmas to send a thank you. You know um, send a send a you know a handwritten thank you note with the recent you know printed magazine issue. Um, or, you know, if you see something at the, you know, a little widget or something at the store and it reminded you of a customer because you know that they love Great Danes or something, um, you know, send that to them with a just, hey, I was just thinking of you. I thought this, hope you know, maybe you'd like this keychain or whatever it is. You know, it doesn't have to be big, grand. Um, it just, yeah, stop waiting until Christmas to say thank you to your customers. Uh, let's see here. Um, another method, uh, you know, of planning to succeed is, is sorting out either a way in, in a spreadsheet or in your CRM to track your year over year business. Um, so combining this with your communications plan and your sales strategies will help you be proactive. So um, I'll, I'll build a spreadsheet that I can look at my, you know, all of my print issues at a quick glance and I know who's been in and out over the past five years. And, and so that helps me be proactive as I start planning for my upcoming, you know, three, four issues, right? All right, so use um, incentives or personalized copywriting for lost advertisers. Um, so this is just, this is probably something as simple as building communication templates for uh, those long lost advertisers. These are simple things like, hey, we miss you or our readers are missing you, you know, or the latest survey shows that readers want to see more insights from financial advisors. You know, can we work together on a, on a plan to help you connect with our audience? Uh, we haven't seen you in a while. How are you? You know, um, and, uh, you know, actually we have one, I, I have a colleague and she likes to send out um. Uh, pictures of her of her dog and and that seems to really work for her and so people respond to that so maybe try that send it you know send a picture of your dog or cat and pets are such a big draw and they're invitingly happy and they just they cause joy so you just might make someone smile if they open your email uh you know and you might you can use incentives um, to, to draw back lost customers. Um, so generally in our businesses might come in the form of, of discounts or upgrades, um, or a, a really tailored high value bundled package or some sort of, um, you know, targeted tailored offer specifically for that customer. Um, but you can also include win back programs where a brand can offer re rewards, uh, if a specific action is taken, for example. Um, you can create a focused list of old advertisers that aren't doing business with you. So that seems pretty self-explanatory. But again, this is planning, sitting down, getting organized. So you're going to create a focused list of, of past advertisers um, and, and start setting out a plan for targeted touch points to get back in their line of sight. OK, and figure out, again, what happened? You know, did, did we just kind of fall off the radar? Did they have a, a staff change? Um, and figure out what happened there so you can try and, and uh, start doing business with them again. All right. Um, my, uh, my last point here is, you know, customer experience expectations and just getting your entire brand team on the same page of how you want your customers to feel 
when they're doing business with you, not only as a sales rep, but your entire team. You know what? And that, that includes if they were to have an experience with your publisher, your account coordinator, somebody who is, you know, setting up their ads on your website um, and all, all the way down to your accounts, accounting team, right? So you want your, your, your accounting team who's delivering invoices or collecting payment to treat those folks with the exact same respect that you do when you're trying to make that sales deal. So I think communicating that across the team is, is extremely important um, in, in keeping those in keeping those customers and bringing on new customers that will hopefully stay with you long-term. I was trying to revive a lost soul recently who advertised with us almost like every month. And this was sort of before my time in my position. And then they have just sort of been incommunicado, like just abruptly. Um, And this was kind of like around the transition time. And so I've been trying to get in touch with them and then you know, I did that sort of change of strategy that you had talked about. Um, and I asked them, um, mentioned that they're, you know, I would love to hear feedback on how they feel we could do better. And we really appreciate their business and, and just sort of was wondering your feedback on like, whether that's, I still haven't heard anything from them. So like, is that sort of like a good approach or like, um, yeah, I guess I just would really love to know what happened because I wasn't part of that like earlier conversations and part of that shift. It just was a very like, oh, so any kind of feedback you can offer on like what I might be able to do differently or do additionally would be much appreciated. Sure. Um, yeah, it's kind of, unfortunately we see that a lot when there's a say a sales rep transition or a new sales rep come in and all of a sudden people kind of, they just, go quiet and we're not really sure what happened. And um, we don't think it's, the, we don't think it's the sales rep, but we can't, you know, get an answer from the company either. You know, did they go through a staff turnover? Um, did something happen? Are they go, you know, sometimes we've seen them go through an acquisition and then we're like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. They were doing some, you know, internal stuff, but um, I do think, yeah, be consistent and, and try and, um, try and get that connection with them. Again, it's hard right now, you might not be able to get a real life meeting with them, but try and stay on their radar. And sometimes even just I've, I've been in situations like that, too, where I'm like, I'm not sure why they're not responding. So I'll pull back just for a little bit, give it a few weeks, and then touch back, touch back in and, and see if you can connect with them or ask them straight up, should I be connecting with somebody else? Is there is there somebody else that I, um, um, should connect with in your department or in your company? Has anything changed? You were a long time, you know, client of ours, and I'm just hoping to to connect with you. Do you find just to pop in there to as a follow up? Would you, do you find it something that people now find a little bit more unusual, like literally taking a card, writing in it, love to have you back, write your name, get put your business card in, mail it to them? Would maybe be a, something that's more than, oh, look, another email or look, another whatever. Would, do you think that that would be useful? Yeah, I'm a big fan of like, like multiple communication channels, right? So I'm always email, um, call or voicemail, uh, back to email, video. Um, I love to send notes. I send thank you cards in the mail, um, anything to try and connect with them connect with them on LinkedIn, even if you don't send them a message on LinkedIn, it's just a gentle reminder to say, Hey, like, you know, just trying to trying to connect with you. So great. Thanks. I appreciate that. I Our CRM is really worth the significant investment. I have a pretty good workflow between current sales list and Excel editorial is managed in Trello and sales list is managed in lists and outlook um, with comprehensive notes and flagging. Hey, like if you can, if you can use outlook and, and, and uh, excel and that works and that's okay um i know there's a lot of like smaller teams that that's that works just fine um as long as your invoicing um all connects properly and you can you know get everything done and organized then um i, I think that's okay it, it really depends on your business model right um annex you know we have over 60 brands and uh, 100 to 200 staff and you know, tons of different things on the go. Um, sometimes we have, you know, brands with uh, two sales reps on it. So those sales reps need to be able to see who's working on what 
Um, so uh, yeah, I get, I think that's fine. Um, at Trello, I hear great things about it. So I think if it works for you, then, then keep plugging away. But um, any tips on how people can get more comfortable recording themselves on video? I know I know I've chatted with folks who just don't like how they look on the video. Um, I, I think we all do. I think none of us really love looking at ourselves on the computer screen. Um, but and it took me a while too uh, to get used to it. But I knew that I had to try something different in my outreach, and I knew that the video was uh, proving pretty successful when the pandemic started. Just to just a different touch point because people were just getting inundated um, with emails, and so. One, um, get comfortable with the software you're using. Two, um, set up a, a atmosphere or background that, that you feel comfortable in. It's not too busy. Um, the focus is on you. Get comfortable with your laptop camera. Um, and a lot of the times when I do a, a short little video, whether it's you know something I'm going to put on an email, something I'm going to upload to a... Um, virtual event booth if I sponsored something and I want a video there um, I always write a script and then just like practice reading that script until you know you can you know it comes out easily and then record it and you can either um, edit it yourself edit it uh, online if you have a video editor on your team they can help you with that stuff but just practice and um, and give yourself some time to to get comfortable with it but eventually it'll just come naturally mm -hmm.